Hey guys, hope you are all doing well. Uh, odd place for me to do a video. I've never done a video in a car. Uh, Nick has done them. Jemai has done them. I thought, hey, why not me too? I also have this like little uh, pink cat cushion uh, in the car as well. Um, but I did thought this would be an appropriate uh, place to do a little video as well and talk about um, how OCD can take over your entire life because I. And I'm also already sensing I'm going to be doing some uh, cheesy uh, dad jokes and puns uh, in this video as well. But I think it might be necessary too. But like, so I want to talk about how OCD can take over your entire life bit by bit. And essentially then what we feel like is that we're, we're at anxiety and OCD's entire mercy basically. Uh, because it, it drives our life. That, by the way, that I wasn't intending for that, but yeah, it's driving our life. Um, so, I think, so I want to take driving as an example of that because uh, driving is something that I I learned in, uh, I think, 2016, I think, I learned how to drive. And I wasn't a very frequent driver, but it was like, yeah, fine. And then in 2017, I stopped driving uh very quickly because by that time ocd had gotten so bad contamination ocd had gotten so bad so i mean for me physically being able to touch certain places or spaces was completely impossible this car was like entirely contaminated for me i could not sit in this car at all uh but it's the same car and i'm sitting here right now uh, I couldn't touch the steering wheel, I couldn't sit in the passenger seat, I couldn't sit like uh, in the back seat, like literally nothing was like okay for me. So, um, and I spent so, uh, I, I spent quite a few years just uh, like taking Ubers essentially because I could not sit in my own car. The car would be available, it would be like at home and free and everything, but I still wouldn't use it because it was uh, terrifying for me to even touch the car. And obviously with... Uh, in general with with all OCD sufferers and we've recently done a video on this on the channel as well like um, it also like kind of obliterates your uh, self-confidence as well like you you don't you don't think that you can do things well uh, and or you could and you can succeed at certain things I as a person am not like the most technical person or I'm not good with mechanical stuff and whatnot like my understanding about that is very low um, and I always rely on my friends for that because they have a much better understanding than I do when it comes to things like that. But so, and so with something like driving a car, like for me in my head, it, it, it also doesn't, it didn't fit as an equation, right? That, oh, that I would be driving a car kind of thing. I felt like, oh, maybe that's just not, uh, for me, but like, I think, but other than that as well, just my overall confidence in being able to drive that also just kind of like went out the window, uh, especially then I had a, a couple of like tiny mini accidents kind of things as well. And that just, I was like, okay, so that was an added factor as well. I thought, okay, maybe driving is not for me or I am not someone who can ever drive well kind of thing, right? So basically like it went out the window. And this is how like, anxiety and fear kind of like start taking over your life because it's just that one day where you make that small decision to be like okay no this is slightly something that makes me scared or this is something that makes me anxious I'm not going to do it and it takes that one day and it's a slippery slope because then that starts going on to I can't do this and this and this and this and this and this and basically lo and behold after like a long time goes like after a very short time basically you're avoiding a ton of different things in your life and you and and then it just doesn't stay till a small thing like driving then it goes on to um, going out with people or places you can be or life goals and things like that we start avoiding all of that uh, because of fear and anxiety and, and that's how and driving was one of those things I think when chronic OCD really hit me bad it was one of the first things to go um, because I made that choice to like stop driving completely and then it translated onto so many other things in my life as well. Um, like again, uh, socializing, um, even like some physical exercise as well of what I thought I could or couldn't do. Generally, my overall belief 
in myself for even trying out different things or um, succeeding at like new experiments and risks in life and whatnot. I, I just thought I couldn't do that. Um, the interesting thing is that I I feel I recovered in like what two years ago, three years ago, something like that. Um, but because I hadn't driven in such a long time since I started suffering, so my phone started heating up and my it stopped recording. But anyway, um, what I was going to say was that I recovered um, like a, a couple of years ago or so. But since uh, stopping driving in 2017, I only resumed it last year because obviously I like I was out of habit. I had to like relearn some things. I mean, I remembered how to drive, but I was just like there was no practice and like uh, and I had to, you know, uh, yeah, I had to practice it again. I had to take it out again and, and stuff like that. And there were just some and I had never driven an automatic car yet. So that was another new challenge for me. And I was a little intimidated by it, uh, but it worked out fine. So but, but the important thing to like highlight over here is that it takes like it takes that one tiny moment that sets a precedent for you to then start letting go of like so many other things of your life. And that is exactly why it is so important for us as uh, OCD coaches as well to highlight those things that you have let go of in the past. Uh, there's so many people who come in who've also let go of like old passions and hobbies and things that they love to do. Um, like, you know, uh, if someone loved to read books or someone who loved to play music or something like that, they completely give that up because it's just something that they feel is too uh, is is a is a thing of the past whereas these aren't things of the past these are things that you can reintroduce back into your life and you can make it more of a habit but it takes that purposeful effort to start incorporating those activities back into your life for you to get back to that place where you feel like oh this is like the old me again i mean it's not the old you it's still like it's the new you but like you're able to now do these things with a fresher state of mind and also with lesser anxiety and probably lesser perfectionism and fear and things like that as well and i think that my uh, after having recovered and starting to drive post recovery like i came into it with a lot of confidence like not in the sense not confidence that oh i'll be the best driver but confidence in the sense of even if I am not the best driver, I can still do it and I can handle if there are any problems on the road that come along. That kind of thing. Uh, confidence doesn't mean that you know you'll do it well. Confidence is that you know that you, you can handle it even if you do it bad. right? And, and this goes for so many other parts of my life as well, which I have uh, reintroduced back into my life after recovery, after having just completely let go of those things because it was because I was anxious, because I was afraid of those things. So I think like if you are someone who is watching this video and if you feel like you have like given up a lot of past things and there's a bad association with it now, there's fear attached to it, it's a trigger or something like that, don't let that become the end of your story. That It does not have to be the end of your story. You can like get to a place where you go back to that place, right? It can become part of your story again. Um, like again, there are so many parts that I lost, but now I have them as back in into my life. Um, but you really have to step out of that comfort zone and really have to take it day by day kind of thing as well. Because if you don't even give yourself a little bit of a chance and if it's a direct that, no, I'm not going to do it or I can't do it, you're not even trying then. But you have to be willing to at least try and see how it goes and see how you do. Because otherwise, again, because it doesn't stay the same in your mind right now it's like oh maybe i'm avoiding these two three things so that's fine no but in e easily in the next few months it'll be another third thing then it'll be a fourth thing and fifth thing and it'll keep going on and on till we eventually just become very awkward people and we become like a shell of ourselves and we become so removed from everything in life um so don't do that which is why this is where like exposures are important um life structure is extremely important because uh, I mean bad life structure also contributed to the fact that I wasn't driving uh, at all but also then looking at your beliefs as well what is it that you're afraid of uh, if I was afraid before that oh I will not be able to drive well and if there's a mistake then I will blame myself 
my phone started heating up again and now I'm back in my room at this point, so I'll just complete the video over here. But essentially, yes. Um, what I was saying was that if I was afraid that I would be a bad driver, I would make a mistake, that used to petrify me before. It does not petrify me anymore because I've been able to look at it from a more rational perspective and from an angle of uh, self-acceptance of someone who can make mistakes. Um, so what if I don't drive well, right? So what if I do make mistake on the road? And I see some of you harm OCD sufferers right now thinking, no, but I'm afraid of killing someone that's way worse than just an accident. Yeah, no, I mean, the principles of acceptance still apply over here as well. Um, which of course doesn't make it okay. Acceptance is not agreement, but we have to remember that. Um, but you can get to that point of working on your Russian thinking around this as well. But, it's, um, but yeah, there's no big like uh, message over here. Number one, I thought it would be good to do a video out, other than outside of my room because this is always like the background that you're always seeing. Um, number two, I thought it would be a good idea to sit in the car that I used to avoid and I thought would be extremely scary, but, um, and I couldn't touch even, but I just sat in that seat, I drove, I came back home, I'm okay, life has not ended. Uh, so if you're someone who feels that way, you also can recover, you can do the things that you used to be afraid of, you can touch the things, if you're a contamination OC OCD sufferer, you can touch the things that you thought would end your life. I just did that and I have been doing that for a long time now. So you can get to that point as well. So just wanted to do a short video on that. Um, don't put things off in life. Get back on track. Bye.